Hi, we're here with Lisa Jones at Pigeon Toe Ceramics for the Northwest Modern Show. We'd like to ask you a couple questions about art and design, if that's all right. Of course. Okay. What do you think are some of the things that define regional sensibilities in art and design? Um, the, the biggest thing for me is the um, DIY culture that exists in our area, um, especially in the Portland region. I think that um, a lot of creative people are attracted to Portland because it tends to bring together a lot of like-minded individuals that have sort of you know, maybe had kind of a disjointed background that somehow, um, you know, you've been a carpenter and, and a ceramicist or um, a blogger and all of these um, ideas sort of come together to make this perfect um, preparation to own your own business and um, uh, design and um, work in the region. Um, just being entrepreneurial is the big thing for me. I've met so many people that have kind of um, Blaze a trail of their own in the city, and part of that is just, um, I think, the affordability of living here. Um, uh, another thing for me is that we're all so, um, everyone's so nice, and there's this real desire to collaborate with other designers in town. Like, I have infinite resources for woodworking and metalworking and um, designing websites and blogging, and I, it's just infinite. Um, and. The idea of being able to work together um, uh, to create something really beautiful um, is shared by a lot of people here. Um, and I also think that, um, at least, you know, I work in home decor and that's really what the show is about. And um, there's a real love of home here and creating a kind of sanctuary at your house full of beautiful objects that, um, you know, sort of define your sense of place. Cool. Um, so what you just talked about, the do-it-yourself and the sense of home, do you think anything has uh, influenced the creation of that uh, idea for art and design? Uh, I do, yeah. Um, I think it, it's a very sort of West Coast attitude in my mind. Um, like, there's definitely something more laid back about living in this region, in the Pacific Northwest, and we also have a great love of the outdoors here and um, sort of taking inspiration from nature. Um, and you know, compared to friends of mine on the uh, West Coast, I definitely think that or more homebodies here, um, which you know, for someone that works in home before, means that you're spending more time in your place and you want to create um, um, an environment that really loves and um, that you really love and that um, says something about who you are as an individual. Um, as far as the entrepreneurial things concerned, I think I already mentioned it's just the affordability of being able to start a business here. It doesn't storefronts aren't five thousand dollars a month. You can get a small place and um, um, start small and grow bigger. And there's people all along the way that are willing to help you um, make your business successful. Um, yeah. So that's what I would say. Are there uh, any of those influences? Have they uh, influenced your work in how you approach art and design? Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, I have no form formal training in ceramics. I have a fine art background and um, I sort of am self-taught um, as a designer as well. My, um, my work when I was in college was in video and installation um, and um, I've you know, been lucky enough to work with a lot of other individuals in um, fashion and um, graphic design um, and I'm definitely one of those people that sort of all of my experiences in my life have been an amalgamation that has built to being able to successfully run a business in the city. Um, and also just, I think I mentioned before that there's this, this sort of um, amazing resource of other people. If you don't know how to do something, there's someone here in town that's more than happy to show you how to do it. Um, there's, I feel like there's very little um, uh, self-consciousness on protecting and um, what you do, like everyone's here is willing to share and um, work to make something that's really beautiful. So, um, you know, I wanted to introduce wood in my last collection, but I have never done woodworking. So, um, I went down the street uh, to Creative Woodworkers and um, just started talking to some of the guys there. And before we knew it, um, they helped me build and modify my designs in a way that would make all the pieces really successful. Um, yeah, it's been instrumental to making it possible for me to work. Cool. Well, thanks so much, Lisa. Um, we look forward to having some of your work at Northwest Modern. Thank you. The big thing with my work is that it has a very um, tactile quality to it. Um, we leave a lot of the porcelain surfaces completely unglazed. 
Um, so you get a real sense of the heft and weight of the natural material and then um, punctuate it with really bright pops of color. Um, I tend to you know, really love the white color, so um, for me, introducing tone it has to be done really thoughtfully, um, so, which is why most of our pieces tend to be just on the inside. Like if you look at the tripods, um, you know, most of our work, if we introduce color, is just on the inside. Um, the pieces have a very sort of rustic modern quality to them. We want them, they're completely handmade on the wheel individually, so they're all slightly different. Um, and we really like to embrace the whole um, maker quality. Um, we definitely strive for professionalism in our work, but um, at the same time, we like that you're able to tell that there is a, a person and a story behind everything that we do. Um, that an individual touched each pot that you own in your possession. Um, and the other big thing with my work is that um, it's affordable. Um, you know, despite being handmade in Portland, you know, U.S.-based companies tend to, um, prices can get really out of control, but we intentionally try and avoid um, making anything that um, is unattainable for anyone, because I don't believe that good design should be out of reach for anyone. And um, it's cool. It is <laughs> for a lot of people, because we're a predominantly porcelain studio. So everything that we make is um, is porcelain. It's sourced locally, and um, so the matte finish is unglazed. And when we throw it, we um, we throw really clean. Um, but then after it's been fired once, we do sand, we sand the surface. And when porcelain is sanded, it gets very, very smooth because the particles are really fine. And it sort of has the texture and heft of a river rock. Um, mm, like a natural stone. Mm -hmm. Like something that's been washed with water. Yeah, over and over, over again. And over. Mm -hmm. So give us a very natural feel. Exactly. Can you show us how that clay looks in its wet form? Sure. When your material is raw and completely um, unformed, it looks like this. And so then we, we cut the blocks up and, and weigh them to whatever, um, you know, each of our pieces require a certain weight of clay. Mm -hmm. And um, so we cut them up and, and wedge them like bread dough and then put them on the wheel as a round ball and throw them. And um, once they're thrown, they, um, they look more like this. Here's a picture that I'm working on. I'll flip it upside down. Um, mm. So it has sort of a more gray quality to it. And why is it gray? Why, why it's is it, more gray? it has still has water in it. Oh. And by the time it dries, it'll look completely white because the moisture will be completely evaporated. What is the difference between porcelain and other types of ceramics? I mean, what is the... Uh, it's the particle makeup. The porcelain is um, a really, really fine uh, material. Stoneware, um, the easiest way to explain it is to think of atoms and how atoms, even when they're making up something, have space in between them. Um, stoneware, the atoms are so fine that when they're fired, they completely fuse together. Whereas the stoneware, the particles are bigger, there's sand in it, which uh, makes it easier to throw because there's, um, um, the sand adds strength. The, sand the bigger sand. particles make it eat so that you can throw it like a crazy wide shape and it won't collapse on itself. So Whereas, it's a finer particulate? Yeah. And, it, um, and the porcelain, um, it's the most difficult thing to throw with. It's kind of like throwing with cream cheese. <laughs> um, Why is that? Because it's so fine? It's so fine. There's just not any particles in there to kind of give it um, heft to the wall gotcha. and but strength. So th this is a porcelain ceramic, right? This is porcelain, yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for visiting.